Make your boots Put on your dancing moves No time to waste Oh Ready, set, and go Yay Fire up the show Oh Ready, set, and go Let the good times go When the night Check your boots, put on your dancing moves. No time to waste. Oh, ready, set, and go. Hello, and welcome to another fantabulous live episode of Where I'm From. If you've watched it before, you know the deal, but this is sort of a, a live recording of a more edited, refined podcast, video cast that we'll be putting out a little bit later. As that is, there will be flubs, there will be dubs, I will mess up quite a lot. It's okay. Uh, if you if you have the patience to stick with that and maybe catch a couple little fun moments that don't make the final cut, please stick around. If not, subscribe to at where I'm from podcast on YouTube and the edited version will be up there in uh, just a couple weeks. Now, I'm really excited about today's guest. I haven't talked to this guy in a number of years, uh, Jared Joseph. Uh, but you know, versus me standing here trying to explain what Jared Joseph means to me, why don't I just play this handy little intro uh, that I edited and then we'll get right to it. Welcome to Where I'm From, the podcast that proves no matter how far you go, you'll always keep a little piece of home with you. I'm Bill Meeks. This week, Jared Joseph joins me to talk about where he's from, Calgary, Alberta, in Canada. That's right, folks. We're going back to Canada, eh? Sorry. You might know Jared from his roles on CW's The 100, from a run of fun Christmas movies, think Lifetime. Or, if you're like me, you know him as Billy the Mechanic from Once Upon a Time. You know, the human form of Gus Gus the Mouse from Cinderella. Now, I used to host a podcast dedicated to Once Upon a Time, Greetings from Storybrooke, if you've heard of it, and Jared's character became a running gag between me and my co-host that Jared was more than happy to jump in on and have some fun with. Something just popped up here. Some weird... Some guy Breaking named Jerry? 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 Jared? I, I don't know. He just left a message here. I, I, we'll play it, and then we'll see what's going on, okay? Listen, I think it's important that before we freak out... We just acknowledge what's happening here. This is Jared Joseph. Yes, it's me. The man who played Gus. The town mechanic. Greetings from Storybrook. Greetings from Vancouver, Canada. I just wanted to shout you guys this podcast out because you've shown Gus so much love. Today, I'm talking to Jared about where he's from, Calgary. Along the way, we'll talk about being a Canadian actor working on American productions and probably spend just a wee little bit of time talking to him about where I know him from, Storybook. Okay, let's talk to Jared. And I'd like to welcome to the show, Jared Joseph. How are you doing today, Jared? I'm doing well, Bill. Good to see you again, brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I, I was trying to think of the last time we talked, and I believe it was, uh, didn't you come on and do like a commentary or like a conversation about uh, the Keaton Batman movie yeah. uh, on Legends of Gotham <laughs> back in the day? Yeah. What was that about 20, maybe 2010? Uh, maybe. I think it's over 10, over 10 years, I think. It could could be could be I don't know I don't keep track of the years anymore. It just yeah. gets depressing after you hit about thirty. <laughs> like you know, you try not to pay attention yeah. too much anymore. No, it's a good testament to our our long lasting friendship. Absolutely. I, let me ask you real quick. Uh, since you were a big fan of the Keaton Batman movie, what what do you think of of what you've seen of the Flash movie that's going to have the Keaton ba Batman in it in a couple months? Uh well, obviously excited just to see it. Um, 
see him, I should say. Uh, <laughs> but I'm concerned that there might, it might, it gave me a very uh, video game feel, mm -hmm. you know, and it won't, it obviously won't be Tim Burton's gothic world. And, yeah. you know, I'd see Michael Keaton flying around and stuff like that. I mean, that's not the Batman I remember, but, <laughs> you know, just got to trust the process. But, you know, I just want to see him. Yeah, absolutely. I hope, it's, it I hope it's grounded, though. Oh, for sure. For sure. With the multiverse, you almost have to be a little grounded for it to work out right. Yeah. I I do think it's going to be interesting um, to see what they make his Batman do, because his Batman yeah. was always so stiff and everything. But now that they can really go in hard on the CGI, it might be cool to actually see that version of Batman move more like Batman, you know? Might be fun. Yeah, that's that's the concern I have. I mean, it could be great, but it also could be a far deviation from what we loved about the Burton movies, right? Mm -hmm. It's a guy yeah. that couldn't turn a, turn his neck, just beating up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm glad that they haven't changed that. It's just still very stiff, which I'm happy about. Yeah, it, it, it almost... It almost makes him a larger than life, uh, almost mythic character, kind of, because he, he doesn't he's not quite realistic as Batman anyway. <laughs> you know? Right. OK, uh, so uh, we're here today uh, not to talk about DC Comics latest movie offerings, uh, but to talk about Calgary, uh, which in your co conversation with me uh, when we were getting this episode set up, you referred to it as the the uh, Texas of Canada. I'm from the Texas of America originally, uh, so we might have some common ground here. Uh, how exactly is Calgary like Texas? Well, I mean, whether it lives up to its reputation is another issue, but that's what Canadians refer to it as and Americans that visit, you know. <clears throat> but it's also, uh, it has a, it's a hybrid of, if you were to put Denver in Texas, so it has the old west but it also has that kind of metropolitan uh dallas old money kind of feel right so mm -hmm. it's a hybrid of every cliche you could ever imagine from the wild west you know you could even have Mon it borders montana about mm -hmm. a couple hours away from montana right so it has that but you know it's the oil industry uh, that's where it is in calgary or in alberta period the rodeo largest rodeo <laughs> in the world top three rodeo in the world um the beef industry it's just there's way too many things in in uh in common with texas to not get the name our police wear cowboy hats and <laughs> oh, i'm not really? saying yeah our, our cops wear cowboy hats ride horseback in some parts of the city and uh oh, wow. you know we really lean into the the cowboy thing there which is why mm -hmm. i call myself cowboy i'm not i'm not a cowboy but i'm a boy it's i'm a boy from cowtown they call it cowtown now, uh, since you were growing up in and around that, did you ever consider uh, going into a more uh, cowboy kind of profession than actor? Listen, I rejected it. I rejected it so much growing up because I was, you know, I wanted to be cool. I want to be cool, black. I'm black. I'm not. I'm, I hated country music because that's <laughs> all my mom listened to. My grandpa's, you know, he's a pipe fitter. He's just a blue collar dude so i i tried to be the opposite of everything that was surrounding me but when you get older you you come home right uh, mm -hmm. i mostly only listen to country music now oh. i'm obsessed i'm obsessed with what the, the wild west culture but uh, you know you run away from what's in your face when you're young and you try to be this yeah i'm everything you know my my dad and my family on my on his side is from antigua so you know reggae and soca uh you know i would like to say i'm i'm, I'm part reggae part redneck you know because my <laughs> the other side of my family is redneck and uh <laughs> but now i love it i love it so much i can't really relate to a lot of the you know the other stuff anymore mm -hmm. you just you stop hating uh you know the obvious things <laughs> yeah yeah and, and that's interesting what you say though about like uh just that, that impulse and i think we all have this a little bit to sort of like be the complete opposite of everything you're around growing up. Like, yeah. uh, it, when do you remember kind of realizing that that's the direction you needed to go, you know, as you were maturing? To go back? Or, or no, just to, to run away, <laughs> to run away. Oh, yeah, I don't know if it was a kind of, it, but you, like you said, you get it. It's like the kind of the, the, the kid that becomes goth when they come from, 
maybe an evangelical family, you know? Yeah, I was independent Baptist and I had my sophomore year in high school was my goth year. It was a very dark year for yeah. everybody involved. <laughs> right, right. But you maybe didn't even choose it. It's maybe just, like you said, an impulse, knee-jerk reaction. And it's like, ah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't remember the, the time that it happened, but I do know that my mom would not turn the country music off. And it, I don't even know if I hated the country music because there was a point that I did love it, you know, with her. It was something we did, like the Judds mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, Garth Brooks. This was in the mid-'90s. It was great country music during that time. But yeah. she, she drove me crazy, as mothers do. So I made it my a part of my my gimmick to, to hate country music. So I think it's I think it started with the country music, and I just rejected all of it. What what are uh, some of your favorite modern country acts that you're into now? Uh, now that you've kind of come back to it, you, I got to tell you, man. There's a dude named Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll. Who, I don't know if from, I'm familiar. Okay, well, Jelly Roll's from Nashville, Tennessee, and he was a rapper. He's a, he's a large rapper. Um, mm -hmm. And he embraced the country thing a couple of years ago, and he has a full-on country album that just came, came out maybe a year or two ago. But I love Jelly Roll, and you need to mm -hmm. listen to the song uh, "Son of a Sinner." And I'm telling Son you, man, you're gonna be impressed. Yeah, I love Jelly Roll, but you know Morgan's great. But I really do end up leaning back Morgan Wallen. I do end up moving back into my uh, my old stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I'm at that point that in my my age, where I, I don't really veer too far from what I know. Yeah, yeah, understood. You like, know what I mean? The era of country that you you uh, kind of came up loving and everything, I kind of miss that. Like, uh, it, my parents weren't really into country, and it, it always just seemed a little like kind of like poppy and too polished. I like the older stuff, like the Johnny Cash, uh, the Willie Nelson, and everything. Are oh yeah, the classics too. Uh, yeah, I, I love the honky tonk too. I love I I I go I go bluegrass. I go far back. I, but I but but you have the nostalgia thing of the songs you heard when you were young and. Um, it, and you're right, though. It did take a pop, a pop turn, especially around the Shania Twain era and stuff yeah. like that, right? But there was some great music coming out, man. And, you know, but it also spurred like uh, guys like Toby Keith, and, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, you know, Brooks and Dunn. You know, mm -hmm. I really love, I really love that stuff. Just out of curiosity, are you into uh, Brad Paisley at all? Because he actually he's from uh, one of the places I'm from in West Virginia. Never got into Brad, but I'll tell you what respect to brad <laughs> yeah it's it, i i want to get him on the show because i've heard stories of, i heard stories about him around town growing up and i kind of want to see if they're all true some of them are bad though so he might not come on <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah like uh apparently uh there was a, a singer songwriter that worked in the area that i grew up in in wheeling west virginia and he taught brad how to play guitar and brad made these ovations that he was going to be part of his his tour band and everything and something happened. I'm not, I'm not sure of the exact details, but I know there was controversy around bad Brad Paisley. I, actually, uh, not to get too far into the Brad Paisley cast or anything, but he was also in a grunge band in Wheeling um, that ended up going, winning uh, the college band contest on Conan O'Brien. So I, I remember, um, like freshman year in homeroom, they turned on the TVs and they were like, you know, someone who who uh, is from Wheeling is on NBC and everyone freaked out about it and they played this really nice grunge song. Then a few years later, I hear about this country act named Brad Paisley. Oh, he was the guy who was on Conan O'Brien that one time playing grunge. I guess he uh, <laughs> veered uh, another way. Is there a video of that performance? Uh, there probably is. I can't remember the name of the band uh, that he was in at the time. I do know that um, that got them a record deal. And then uh, from what I've heard, he sort of abandoned the rest of them <laughs> almost immediately and uh, went the country route. But again, Brad Paisley, if, if you're watching, I know you might be. Um, if you want to come and set the record straight, uh, Bill at BillMeeks.com, hit me up. Um, Brad's done well for himself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, now, uh, you said again that, uh, you know, Calgary is the Texas of Canada, but there are levels, right? Uh, are, are there any bad things about Texas that you think are better in Calgary? Great question. See, you know, Calgary's really leaned into kind of the, 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 uh, the cool thing, right? Like Austin, mm -hmm. Texas is cool at least yeah. in reputation. 
So Calgary's really leaned into that um, smaller culture, but it has mm-hmm. it doesn't have the vastness of Dallas. But I, I just I think I think it's taken the best parts of Texas and kind of leaned into it because every city need or town needs its identity, right? Portland has its thing, which isn't too good these days, but. <laughs> Portland has its reputation. These cities need a, a, a reputation, right? So uh, I think it's just borrowed the best things from Texas uh, in that yeah. part of the world, really. I mean, just the South period, man. You could mm-hmm. Calgary has a lot in common with Nashville as well. It has a lot in common with Denver, like I said. So uh, To put a point on it, what, what are those positive things you think Calgary uh, kind of, not necessarily cribbed from Texas, but kind of uh, does as well or better than Texas? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I think geographically, we're not that close, really. But the southern hospitality thing, mm-hmm. you know, in southern Alberta, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know how to answer that. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, that, that, uh, so um, let me think here. What was I going to say? What was I going to say? Um, what, what does it feel like? Uh, going to Texas, thinking of Calgary as, you know, the Texas of Canada, d- d- are you constantly comparing it to where you're from or? No, 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 I, I get to Texas. I'm, it, I'm, it would swallow Calgary up. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. And then probably shoot it because, you know, Texas. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, legally. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. It's like, you know, Texas is a, a country. Texas is a country, right? So, uh, mm-hmm. no, you you get reminded of how many little similarities there are in actuality when you're in Texas because it, it's you know it's a, it's Big Daddy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But w- when you're not in Texas, you're like, oh, I think this is what maybe someone in Australia would think Texas is like. Is there a lot of a uh, cuisine crossover too? Like, is there like a barbecue scene in Calgary? Like, a, there is. Barbecue? Yeah, there is. I wouldn't compare it. But I will say that we really lean into our beef thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, this is we're the beef exporter of, of Canada, so yeah. Obviously, yeah, beef. We 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 go into our beef, Alberta beef. You see Alberta beef stickers on cars and stuff like that. We, we got the <laughs> beef, and now, like I said, we're doing the Austin thing. So we're doing kind of the the West kind of dive bar, mm-hmm. <laughs> super liberal dive bar that rejects the country stuff, but still wants to like mock it a little bit. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, the ironic country bar kind of thing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of that shit going on. The stuff going on. Nice. Okay, well, uh, this is a question I like to ask uh, a lot of my guests, uh, just because I, I always think it's interesting, and I had a lot of that mattered to me. Were there any teachers uh, growing up that had a sort of a profound effect on you or pointed you in a direction as far as where you went in your life uh, from Calgary? No, the opposite. I'll tell you, there's Miss Johns. Who, uh, and listen, this was the early 90s, grade three, so maybe 1994. I don't know why I remember this so quickly. <laughs> but she, I've never had a teacher like me, and I, and rightly so. You know, I'm, I'm old enough now, I can look back and be like, I would hate that kid. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't want that kid around my kids. I, you know, when you're, a, when you're an adult, you could admit some kids you don't really uh, take to as much as some other kids, right? Yeah, but yeah. when you're you're a kid, you think everyone has to like you because you're a kid. So, uh, she mm-hmm. this is my my knee. I dropped out of school and when I was about sixteen, right? So I didn't get too mm-hmm. far. But my knee jerk reaction to things that weren't working well for me was to get angry, and I was that kid in most of my classes. And it, and in grade three, I remember Miss John. And I don't want to get too into the race stuff. It bored me. But I'll tell you, there's a time when my mom had to come in and talk to Miss Johns. And I remember her sitting my mom down and saying, you know, the kids are going to all think they're, they're going to think all black people are like Jerry, you know. And I was uh, that stuck with me. And she said she was very adamant that I wasn't going to do well. And again, I don't yeah. blame her. I, I gave all the indications that I wouldn't. But no, I I've had the opposite from teachers my entire life, you know, mm-hmm. and um she stuck with me. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can imagine, they, especially after that that last example. They're like, "Come on, like, I mean, a kid can have an attitude, and it doesn't have to be like, 
you don't have to file it into you know the bucket of a stereotype you know well no it's it's a huge burden to say that the entire race is on my shoulders because I, I threw the pencil at the kid you know what i mean so. oh yeah yeah in, in like a i think i think anyone who fits into any category like uh you know if someone's like, like, I can't be held responsible for everything every man on the planet does. You know? No, it's like, no, it's like a, no, we're all individuals. So I'm glad those young men probably met other people that look like me and they can discern for themselves which ones they like and which ones they don't. Because <laughs> tell you what, in third grade, that's a lot to put on a kid's shoulders, man. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, normally when I ask people that question, they have some supportive teacher who pointed them in a direction. You do not. So no. what kind of got you into acting? Like what kind of what pointed you in that direction? That crazy kid had to make a living somehow. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, you know, all that behavioral stuff that I had issues with academic issues and all those things. I mean, it kind of makes sense. You know, my refuge from all of that, because I, I like I said, I was a poor student not applied i don't think i applied myself but mm -hmm. i would act out i dressed as batman until second grade <laughs> with a it, the, the, the blue, blue and gray batman costume my mother can attest to it i drew elvis sideburns for a year <laughs> i was always and i don't want to say looking for a stage because i'm not really uh that attention starved as a person i you know i'm pretty quiet and, but I, I did like the performing thing and uh yeah it, it made sense you know that when that dad student goes out into the real world there's he's either going to get fired all the time or he's not going to get a job at all mm -hmm. so acting this made sense by the time i made such a mess of my life i was like i joined the circus bill yeah well it's like uh i'd imagine it's sort of like you know you're having all this this strife in your personal life and that's all attached to jared and with acting you can toss on a hat and you can go have a grand adventure I, and, uh, you know, kind of escape all that a little bit, too. No, exactly. Exactly. I, that, that young boy, I'm still trying to learn him, but I believe he was looking out for some something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it wasn't going to happen in the regular life. So, yeah, Bill, I just I went, I went where the freaks are. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, I love how you say circus folks, because that's always what, you know, theater and acting and all that has always reminded me of. Like, my dad was a magician who worked for the circus, and I always kind of imagine maybe I kind of got drawn to that lifestyle because he came from that sort of sort of background, right. you know, where it's like, you know, it's kind of, it's a dysfunctional family. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It is the lottery. And if the lottery and the circus had a baby, it would be <laughs> It'd be this silly industry. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, back to Calgary. We we already touched a little bit on food, but uh, what are some of your favorite local places in Calgary to eat, or were anyway, uh, when you lived there? You know, Bill, I always want to keep it real, man. I don't want to be a phony. I haven't lived in Calgary for a long time now, and it's changed so much. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a place that's closed if you'd like. Why? Listen, I mean, the cuisine thing wasn't really a thing for me because I was so I was broke, man. I'll mm -hmm. tell you what, though, the Taco Bell by my old high school, Bishop McNally, which is since, you know what? There's a pizza hut there that's since turned into an Indian restaurant, but it kept <laughs> it kept the hut. So when you nice, drive by, nice. it's one of those city. ghost pizza huts. There you go. And you go in there for an Indian buffet. And my city's changed so much, man. My, um, you know, I got to be honest with you, though. You know, Calgary is my hometown. It is my hometown. But my mom and I, I grew up in a kind of a gypsy lifestyle. I lived in, I counted it the other day for this, uh, like 13 different cities growing up. Oh, wow. So Calgary is home, but I've been everywhere. So, <laughs> yeah. I, we, we, so uh, were all 13 of those cities in Canada, or did you like, Bumped down to the U.S. for a bit or anything? No, they were all in Canada. I've since lived in the U.S., as you can imagine, I'm sure. Um, but I lived in a city called uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, hmm. which is a border town and um, <clears throat> to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. So if you, if you could stand 
at the duty the customs and you could look across you could see america was just it was it was that like we're talking that three minute bridge right yeah but that's as close it was like the land we would go there sometimes but it was always like <laughs> the land of freedom we could smell your freedom just like shining out there across the river like a freaking like battle him or something <laughs> yeah I was, you know i wanted to get out of here but no yeah, yeah i've i've and I think that's another reason that led me to acting is because I was such a, a vagabond, mm -hmm. unstable. But, you know, Calgary's where all my family is. That's where I did most of my formative, you know, cognitive formative years. So yeah. That's still home. Um, as far as bouncing around, uh, did, did you kind of, because like, I know a lot of people who have moved around a lot when they were kids, they sort of came up with like a, a process that they would, go through when they landed in a new school to try and like quickly build cred and everything like that. Did you have a process? Well, here's the thing. Yes. A little bit. It kind of was what we talked about where I would almost have these gimmicks. Mm -hmm. So we, there's the one bad thing about that kind of lifestyle is that you, when you start to believe everything is temporary and relationships are temporary, you believe you can almost do anything because you're like, oh, I'm not going to be here. Who cares? So you, you kind of make disposable. a mess. Everything's yeah. disposable. People are disposable. And I had a tendency to make a mess of everything because I didn't have that, that st stability in my mind, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would I would kind of take on a, a different approach everywhere. And I got a lot of practice with people because of it. But, you know, I was I was into sports and that was the, always the common denominator. And it, the one thing to make it friends was the, the sports route, especially yeah. if you're pretty good, you know, people <laughs> pick you as, but no, the, the the main thing was, yeah, I had a fresh start all the time. Which probably leads right back to the acting stuff, because, you know, you were constantly kind of walking onto a new set with a new character. I end up, uh, you know, try, trying to do the best you could with the temporary family you had around, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. All right. So, um, you know, uh, back to Calgary uh, a little bit. Uh, did... did I, I forget, did you uh, kind of land on being an actor while you were there? And uh, if so, was it kind of supportive for you as a young artist? Um, <clears throat> you know, like I, I wasn't really, I was getting in trouble, Bill. There's no mm -hmm. other way to say it. I was getting in trouble and I was making dumb decisions. You know, I was becoming a drunk and uh, just getting in stuff. Right. So yeah. by the time that you've been through all of that stuff to your family and you, they see you that way, you go to tell them you're going to go try and be an actor. That's the, okay. That's the best thing they could ever hear. Right. Whatever yeah. that is, is probably better than this, you know? So mm -hmm. I had no pushback from it, you know, and I, I've been, I had a construction job of building roads and that was the, I was making pretty good money, but I was always coming home to watch these, these shows, you know, my paycheck would come and my treat would be to go to HMV, which is like a Sam, you know, mm -hmm. and I would get a, a new DVD of a new series. And then I would watch that. And then just kind of came to me. I was like, if you were to do something, what would you want to do? And it, it, it came back to what do you like? And what industry would take you? You high school, your high school dropout, <laughs> you're, you're, you know, you live like a punk. And Hollywood yeah. was the thing that made sense. So I remember I went and I told my mom, I said, Mom, I'm going to, I'm going to, when winter comes, I'm going to go move to Vancouver and do acting. And I just remember she was like smoking. Sounds good to me, son. You know, <laughs> I had no pushback. Yeah. Well, well, that's good though. Uh, Cause um, you know, going into a acting career can seem pretty foolish to most people and uh most people would probably try to discourage you so that that's nice that at least you didn't have any kind of roadblocks uh moving forward I, you know in canada i mean obviously canada has a great uh entertainment industry all its own and everything but a lot of people think of america more as like the film industry did you sort of come up with a plan of attack to try and get in there, get into some American productions, or were you just focused on like, you know, trying to get a series on, I don't know, CTV or something? Well, Vancouver is the only city in all of Canada that doesn't snow. So mm -hmm. my first incentive was to get away from winter. I got to also say Calgary has the Chinook winds. So the, the, the winters aren't as bad. 
Um, everybody look up Chinook Wind if you're interested in that. Uh, <laughs> but there's another city called Edmonton, which borders it, and that is mm -hmm. freezing cold. So I was done. I was done with the Alberta weather, man. So it was kind of this thing. Even if it doesn't work out for me, I'm going to be warm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but the plan of attack was I had a friend named Carlos who lived in uh, Alberta, but he's originally from Vancouver. And he was always talking about Vancouver, Vancouver, Vancouver. Mm. He says, you know, there's really no, when I told him I was going to, I wanted to be an actor, he's like, you know, there's no, no black people in Vancouver. <laughs> there is no, and there still isn't, which, uh, yeah. and I was like, okay, if I go there and I do this and I, I'm a half good, I mean, I might be able to corner a market, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. So yeah, yeah. the the plan of attack, and, and you know, we can't just go to America and live there and work there. It's not that easy, right? Mm -hmm. I've since had visas and stuff like that. But the, yeah. I, I would have loved to have gone straight to California, but it's probably better that I didn't since the industry is a lot smaller here. And um, yeah. more opportunity, more opportunity. Yeah. And the great thing is everybody thinks uh, Canada's productions and all these stuff. But these are American shows, right? Like these are city. We're, we were we're simulating American cities. I mean, yeah, Vancouver is Seattle, Boston, Los Angeles. Weird mishmash. You could be anything. But yeah. yeah, no. But that's the thing that excited me was that. Oh, it might be a good way to start. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I'm sure I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that and uh, some of the roles you've had later. But for now, uh, let's go back to your comparison of Calgary to Texas a little bit. Sure. Um, because, you know, you mentioned uh, a love for the Calgary Stampede, an annual rodeo which builds itself as the greatest outdoor show on earth. So uh, why don't you uh, give a little bit more detail and color about the Calgary Stampede and uh, then maybe tell me your first memory of the Calgary Stampede. Stampede, I guess you would uh, understand it as the, the state fair on steroids. Mm -hmm. And one part of it will have the rodeo, the annual rodeo going on, which you can do for all eight days, seven days is what's going on. But the most, most people hang out in the beer gardens. There's a concert stage and <laughs> beer. <laughs> there's a concert stage. And then in the middle, you have Disney World. Mm -hmm. So it's just this all encompassing. I really do believe it is the biggest in the world. I could be wrong, but you know, you, you think of Six Flags, but you also think of a concert. That's, that's, yeah. it is, that's exactly that. And it's a great time. My memory, I would say, you know, actually I got, I got in a fight and um, <clears throat> this was 2005, I think. Mm -hmm. And I got my, I got bottled in the face with a Snapple bottle mm -hmm. uh, from wow. behind. And then I, uh, I remember I went to the hospital, but it was, it was filled up. See, this is, I'm just trying to paint a picture here. And I would go to the hospital and it was Full, and they just to give you an idea of how I was mentally at that time, that I got so upset that I wasn't being seen while my face is gashed up and dripping, right? I'm soaking wet. Yeah. That I ended up just going back to my friend's house, and my lip was split right here. Ooh. Right here. You can do that with it. <sighs> and I, I ended up just pouring booze on it and duct taping it overnight. <sighs> and that was, I don't know how it healed. But, anyways, <laughs> that's it. That's worked a though, like, it worked, dude. Holy crap. <laughs> I, I, I blacked out most of that time in my life for obvious reasons. <laughs> but I don't know how my face got back. Um, but yeah, that's my last memory. And that was the time that, you know, I kind of changed my ways that way at that time as well, because the stampede mm -hmm. for me was always a positive thing. It was, you know, I wanted that adolescent feeling to it. But then when that incident happened, it kind of soured for me. But, yeah. you know, I've been back since and no fights and everybody loves each other. But uh, did, a lot of cowgirls. Of course, of course. Uh, did, did you ever get involved in any of the events in a, on a more, I don't know, professional side of things? Like, did you were you ever participating in the rodeo or anything like that? No, no. But I actually have a photo of me riding horseback with my, my hat doing this. I do have that photo. But, you know, that little boy... You know, you you go you go there with your cowboy hat. You always get a new straw hat. You have your mm -hmm. bandana. I just kind of again, just back to the the common denominator of being this kid that you know performing and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. I just love to go and dress up as a cowboy and walk around with my mom and eat the the food. Oh mm -hmm. my god, the food, man! I mean, you know, state fair food, but this is like 
it's like that. Oh, it's just crazy. Was there anything ridiculous like lard covered corn dogs or, you know, cheese curds and gravy or anything? Or It exists now, but not then. <laughs> You know, no one knew what a freaking calorie was in the early 90s, right? And so we just kind of just made stuff up as we went. But I, we have the world famous donuts, our mini donuts. Mm. And that's that's what people go crazy for is little mini donuts. Little mini, so so just like, just a regular donut, but miniature or more like a donut hole? Or... It's, uh, yeah, they're tight. They're, they're still, they're still circular with the hole, but they're mm -hmm. packed. And they're, uh, you know, just sugared up and spiced up. But I'm sure they're everywhere. But for us, we think it's we're the only place that has it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that is. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I know it had the whole fair aspect and everything. But there was also, you know, an actual rodeo. Do, do you remember ever seeing any really bad accidents at the rodeo or anything like that? No, my, my mom always kept me away from that my mom is big big on animals and you know as am i but at a very very early age she was very aware of it mm -hmm. and she didn't she didn't take me around uh what would she would perceive as animal abuse or anything like that so i since have a more a mature understanding of it but you know she didn't really want to see me seeing that going on with the the bulls and stuff so uh, it was uh, it was always kind of shielded off, you know, kind of mm -hmm. had a big rise and you have to go into that part of the stampede. Yeah, and she pretty much kept me away from that. I, I, that's interesting, though, you know, because, you know, it sounds not only was it an important event to your community, but it was an important event to you growing up and kind of, you know, constantly avoiding the main <laughs> the main uh, show <laughs> of it uh, is, is interesting. Um, it, so you you said you've seen rodeos since. Do you ever regret not seeing those maybe slightly more rough and tumble ro rodeos of the '90s? No, you know, Bill. I think the time, I believe in timing and maturity and stuff like that. I probably would have broke that little kid's heart, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You know, because I was aware. Yeah. I was aware. You know, I yeah. I don't think I don't think it's a, a mistake that I missed it when I was young. But I, you know, I, I go, I go now, and I, you know, I like I said, I'm obsessed with Western culture, man. And, yeah, uh, I say Western culture like I live in live in, uh, you know, Pakistan, and I'm talking about America <laughs> or something like that. But, no, Wild West culture, um, you know, and people love the show Yellowstone now, right? And Yellowstone is just Alberta. I mean, you could shoot that in Alberta, so mm -hmm. I'm glad that that kind of culture is being embraced. In the mainstream. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they, I haven't got to see it yet, but I've, I've heard many, many, many good things about it. I'll, I'll have to yeah. check it out. Yeah. Um, I, one thing I was wondering, and you might know this, you might not. I might edit it out of the final episode. But I was always kind of curious, like, when there's a rodeo, like, what's the economic incentive there? Is it more about being a fair with some shows? Is it about, like, farmers bringing their cattle to sell off or what what's kind of the purpose of it well you know it you have the riders right the riders mm -hmm. have this is their this is their world championship stanley cup you know this is their opportunity to do their thing they wait all year to do their show mm -hmm. so you know it's a it's it's a sport so you have the participants that are excited to do it they bring their bulls and then uh you know the, it's a spectator thing as well so there is a huge contingent of people in Alberta that love to watch the rodeo. So mm -hmm. you just think of it, think of it like uh, an annual championship. You Fair know. enough. Fair yeah. enough. With a, with a, you know, some junk food <laughs> with junk the food. facilities. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Man. All right. Very cool. Okay. Well, Jared, we're ready for our first game here. This game is called what if it happened here? Now, you've been in a lot of shows over the years, so I'm going to call out some of the shows you've been on and then ask how your character's story would be different if the story had happened in Calgary. Make sense? Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right, first up, the 100. Well, he probably wouldn't have been gay. <laughs> just uh, not very gay friendly there in Calgary? No, it is. It's just, I'm just stereotyping. I'm being silly. <laughs> but uh, the character in Calgary, um, 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He'd be, he'd be better on horseback. <laughs> More used to it. More used to it. Yeah. Nice. Wouldn't be a, All right. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, this one I found on your IMDb. It tickled me pink. So I have to ask Marley and me, the puppy years. Oh my gosh. What are you doing to me, man? Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll t I don't know. I'll tell you what. I used to wear pink. I, there's a rapper named Cameron, and there was a males wearing pink movement in hip hop for a few years. I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, that outfit that I wore in that thing was a pink jumper with a backwards pink hat. And uh, I, dr I dressed like that. So <laughs> I probably have more in common with that stupid character that i'd like to imagine so so in this case it might as well have been set in calgary got it got that's it. the same same guy it's the same dude in 2004 <laughs> okay arrow arrow so this character was set in calgary mm -hmm. yeah well you can you can go ahead and expand you can say the whole show's set in calgary if you want to okay Uh, I would say that Oliver Queen would wear a cowboy hat. Mm -hmm. uh, he wouldn't be as Bruce Wayne. -y, you know what I mean? He wouldn't <laughs> be as Bruce Wayne. -y. He'd be more J.R. Ewing. Yeah. Probably still wear the leather, though. Oh, the uniform would stay the same, but Oliver <laughs> Queen in, in daily life would be, a, you know, a, fa a, a fake uh, <laughs> rich billionaire cowboy. He, he'd be an oil baron. <laughs> he'd be an oil baron, exactly. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, Okay, uh, this one I believe is a little more recent. I, I sorry, Jared, I haven't seen it. The Christmas Checklist. That was basically shot in Calgary. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, it, Are we you shot it? Yet. Um, no, listen, they they do these 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 films. Uh, they are set in small town, rural, what people believe to be flyover country and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So. Often they do shoot in Calgary. So what you're seeing in that movie can mirror culturally exactly almost to, to a T what, you know, small town Alberta would look like. So it's not a, it's not a far deviation. Nice. That seems to be a common thread here. It seems yeah. like a lot, a lot of uh, your fictional lives are pretty close to your, to your actual pretty, life. Pretty close. I mean, Calgary can double as most American cities like i said it could double as nashville so there's not a lot to calgary that geographically geographically you'd be like to be like you know we have the calgary yeah. tower but we don't we don't have the santa monica pier and stuff like that you know it's mm -hmm. calgary looks like america and calgary looks like canada so yeah, it's not a big deviation shoot, just have to shoot it at the right angle no exactly <laughs> okay and i believe this might have been one of the either the first or one of the most prolific first entries I saw on your IMDb page. And I don't know anything about it. So you can say anything here coded. Oh, that's great. You know, I don't know if this is right for the game, but I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I played a teacher in that uh, kind of the teacher I always dreamed of having to take me aside and be like, Hey buddy, you have to think beyond the next 15 minutes when you make decisions, right? You have to stop, punching the walls. Uh, I, I got to play that teacher that I always wish I had. Oh, so, nice. yeah, I think about that young boy in Calgary. I, pre I portrayed it that way as well. I approached it that way. I mean, like, what would young Jared have been like, like to have heard? So, <clears throat> so, so if you want a little more insight into Jared the person, go watch uh, how Jared the actor played that part a little sure. bit, probably. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You could look at the, the worst kid in that show, worst mm -hmm. kid in that show, and you could also look at the teacher, and you'll see both. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Okay, and uh, this last one here, um, I, I'm going to ask you to keep it very specific to the character, because this is the character that connected us. Uh, Billy the Mechanic slash Gus Gus on Once Upon a Time. <laughs> Sounds about right, man. Blue collar. Uh, you know, hardworking guy that just turns into a friggin' mouse sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say, man. 
I don't know what to do say. You th- do you think the Calgary uh, police would have solved Billy's gruesome murder? Because <laughs> um, didn't your body end up in a dumpster or something? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. That's what I hear. It was just a, a stuffed dummy. <laughs> but, uh, you know yeah, what? They don't the have Calgary to pay po- the dummy. No, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, the Calgary police probably would have uh, let that one slide. You know, especially mm. when it was the time in the mid 2000s when I was living there and I was, you know, just getting in all that trouble there. I think on yeah. their priority list, they probably would have uh, went on to bigger, better things. <laughs> Mechanic in the dumpster. Oh, that's just a no, Tuesday. There's too much crime, man. They got, they got other <laughs> stuff to do. Nice. All right. Well, Jared, that does it for the game. I'd like you to let you know you've won. Uh, and the thing you've won, and I'm sure you're very, very excited about it, is a quick word from our sponsor. So I'm going to play an ad real quick, and then we'll be right back to talk more Calgary with Jared Joseph. Stay tuned. Where I'm From is brought to you by Streen Studio. That's S-T-R-E-A-N-N Studio. The web app that puts you in charge of the live show. Stream Studio allows you to take your streaming game to the next level by allowing you to stream to multiple platforms at once. If you want to go to Twitch, if you want to go to YouTube, you can stream to all of those platforms at once, get feedback from your audience, and most importantly, it puts you in control of the show. Now, Stream Studio has several packages that work for just about any type of broadcaster. From the free plan, where you can stream with a watermark, all the way up to the gold plan, where you can have up to eight guests. You can stream to as many social platforms as you want. You can get a web link to share your show with external audiences, and you can even get an iframe so you can embed your live stream show directly into your website. Hey, I love Stream Studio so much, I'm using it to produce this show. I want to thank Stream Studio for supporting where I'm from, and you can give this fantastic software spin and support where I'm from at the same time. Just head over to our website at billmeeks.com slash where I'm from and click on the Stream Studio banner so they know we sent you their way. And we want to thank Stream Studio for sponsoring where I'm from. Uh, now, Jared, uh, I'm currently living in Los Angeles, so I can't walk down the street without running into an aspiring actor. So mm-hmm. I kind of get how it goes here. But what is it like being a working actor in Canada? It's a great, great question, because I've talked to my agent about this many times, you know, and a lot of actors in Canada, let's put it this way. The Canadian industry is viewed as the service industry which means like the hard work has been done in California a lot of the times. And then you have your, uh, your journeyman here, right? And Mm -hmm. I don't mean that in a bad way, but you have these things you have to fill these positions you have to fill. So we're not really the place that designs the, um, the template we, we help with it. And, uh, so yeah, by the time it gets here, I mean the casting process is probably ninety percent done, mm-hmm. um, and that's that's the big difference. So as an actor, you have to you're almost forced to become this jack of all trades because you never know what kind of production is going to come here. You have to have a little bit of everything. Whereas in the U.S., you can position yourself and you can be I'm going to go this kind of route. You know, I'm going to be this kind of actor. But in Vancouver, you don't have that choice because it, there's nothing nothing that to do. You got to go out for this thing or go out for that thing. You might not be great at it, but you have to do it. So I would say that's a huge difference. And it's the one thing that I wish we could change in some way is you can design a plan with your, your, your managers and your agents say, this is how I see things going. It's what I want to do, but you don't really have that luxury here. And it kind of sucks. Yeah. You can strategize where in Canada, you kind of got to take what you can get a little bit. That's right? right. Yeah. And I think that, that, you know, a lot of people miss opportunities that way because they could be amazing for a certain kind of thing, but the thing doesn't come. So, mm-hmm. so, so, uh, how does uh, obviously COVID probably change things a little bit, but how, how does casting work in Canada versus here in LA where you know they just call you down to the office one day, or is it basically the same kind of thing? It's, um, everything's virtual now, mm-hmm. so which is a great thing for a couple. For for about I spent about a year living in London because of that, you know. And uh, every actor's dreamt of the opportunity to kind of live where they want to live. 
uh, and pursue this, right? It's, we're not beholden to LA or Vancouver, right? Um, yeah, everything's digital. I mean, we all, is digi digital work virtual? Right? Uh, digital is probably better. Digital is probably better. Is it? Okay, yeah. yeah. It, it's that. And we do our self tapes. I do my self tape right here on this wall. I send mm -hmm. it off. It's that, you know, and I, I really, anybody that has nerves going into audition rooms is like thanking God right now, right? But yeah, that's how it's changed. I, I don't know. I have done one or two of the of the auditions where you just film yourself. And it's ironic because, you know, here I am talking to a camera right now. But for some reason, it's just like when it's just me and the camera, I get more nervous than if there was like a person there because you're not getting any feedback, you know, like you, you don't know if you're doing oh. well or not. Yeah. And it's completely disingenuous, right? It's 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 such an inauthentic, authentic process, right? You're in a scene with four people and you're you're by yourself in your house. You got your eye line here, here, here. You got nothing to feed off of, right? So it is it is a it's like a different skill. And I know I, I'm not someone who loves the audition process. And I know people that are great auditioners and are not a good auditioners and not great, you know, it vice versa, but mm. yeah, I know it's a it's a very bizarre it's a skill in itself to audition. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, uh, up there in Canada, do you have, do you ever try out for Canadian only productions, or do you just try and focus on the Hollywood stuff that kind of floats up there? I would say the majority of things I've done have been American productions, right? You know, mm -hmm. for the most part, anything anyone's ever seen me in <laughs> has been an American <laughs> production. But you yeah, know, I you know, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I've got to work on some Canadian things over the years, but for yeah, the first three quarters of my career, I didn't do one. Were there any Canadian shows you liked growing up or anything that you always wanted to get on that you never had the opportunity oh to? Or Oh my goodness gracious, man. I, I was a huge Degrassi fan. That's uh, kind of what I was thinking when I asked the question. <laughs> of course. I loved it. And I actually got to meet a lot of, I became friends with a couple of the, the folks from that show which is the dream come true, you know? Nice. Uh, but I, I loved Kids in the Hall, uh, mm -hmm. SCTV. Oh my gosh, man. We've had great things come out of Canada for sure. Now you have Letterkenny and you have, you know, obviously Trailer Park Boys. And oh yes, yeah, specifically in the comedy space, you know, Canada, there's a higher concentration of comedians in Canada than there really seems to have any right to be, you know? Like oh, it's for just sure, like dude. So many legends. Shit's Creek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I don't know how. How do we, I don't know how we birth all of these great, even someone like Ryan Reynolds, who is hilarious, right? Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. He has his own very sarcastic brand of humor. Uh, Matthew Perry from Friends, like there's, I do, we just, we've had funny people over the years that aren't even stand up comics. And, you know, Jim Carrey speaks for himself, but, yeah. you know, there's a lot of sneaky, funny people that have come out of here. Yeah, even uh, your musicians are funny. One thing, my favorite band's Bare Naked Ladies, and one of my favorite things about going to see their shows is they'll do like improv songs throughout the show. Like they'll just make it up on the spot about yeah. the venue or something crazy happening in the audience or whatever. Everyone's yeah, a comedy. comedian in Canada. Comedy is a huge part of their identity too. Yeah. <laughs> do you think uh, there's anything in the Canadian experience that uh, makes people uh, gravitate towards comedy? I think there's a levity with Canadians, you know, you can, it borders on passivity as well. Mm -hmm. um, people think Canadians are nice. I would say Canadians are kind, but I don't know. There's a difference between nice and kind, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, we, we have that, that identity and I, it's largely true. I got to say, you know, there's, people don't stress and there's not a hardness with Canadians that I, you know, that I experienced in the U.S. And I don't think that's a bad thing. You guys, constitution, you protect yourself, you you know what you, you know, you got your boundaries, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. Canadians won't really enforce their boundaries as much. So <laughs> uh, there's a lot, you can birth the, a silliness can come out of that levity. Yeah, just, uh, I, I guess that all just boils down to, you know, not taking yourself too seriously. For sure. You know? yeah. yeah, 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 we're silly people. Almost to a fault. We're silly people. <laughs> nice. Okay. So um, I did want to ask, um, 
I already mentioned it a couple times earlier in the episode. We got to know each other uh, because you played Gus Gus on Once Upon a Time, and I hosted a podcast about Once Upon a Time called Greetings from Storybrooke. And I remember the first season we were doing the podcast, uh, your character showed up and died almost immediately. And we were like, that's really funny. Why don't we make that a running joke where we're constantly reference Gus Gus or Billy the Mechanic throughout, throughout, throughout. And uh, at some point, I forget, I think it might have been one of our listeners mentioned it on Twitter and tagged you in it. So I was just kind of curious, like, when did you become aware of what we were doing about you on Greetings from Storybrooke? I mean, when you told me. When you told oh, okay. me. I mean, yeah, I mean, then I could see it, obviously, but. Yeah. Because I felt so in- inconsequential to that show, I didn't think about the show that much. Um, mm-hmm. But it was nice that there was a sector of people that did care. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, there, there's a, there was a very big sector of people who cared an awful lot about that show in both good and bad ways. Well, you know, such a, such an experience that was. Because I, I don't know what it is with my career, but I've locked out where I've gone on for an episode and stayed for eight years. You know what I mean? And that was a similar thing too. I think there was just a, one day she needed a love interest for this. Uh, <laughs> might have been filling a quota. I'm not going to say I don't know. <laughs> but uh, and then the, the, let's make him a mouse. Uh, which which mouse? I think I think it went that way. So I don't know, man. My experience on that show was kind of bizarre. Yeah, it sounds it sounds it. Well, um, what was it, what so- am I doing here? <laughs> no one knew. Um, I I, I do a. I do remember you always being more than willing to, you know, send in a voicemail when we asked for it or, you know, kind of like play around with the show as we were going on. Um, What made you decide to come play with us? Like, just because, you know, as far as you knew, we were like nobodies with a podcast who had no connection to anything and were, were contacting you about a show you had one small part on. So what kind of convinced you to come play? Well, if, you, if you're nobody, I was a nobody. So no boy, nobody's unite, whatever, right? <laughs> nobody plus <laughs> nobody equals somebody. You know, listen, man, you know, I've told you a bit about my life. It's, uh, I mean, the idea that we want to talk to me is, you know, it's like the fact you want to talk to me, man. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You know, well, um, it's pleasure. You know, being on a show like Once Upon a Time and The 100 and so, some other shows with, you know, these sort of rabid online followings, uh, it can kind of put you in a spotlight in both a positive and a negative way. Uh, what are some of the most positive and or negative interactions you've had with fans of the shows you've been on? I might have really underestimated the social media thing, and I don't think it was what it was, but it was 2014 around the time that I started realizing that you know, I was experiencing a little bit of fame, you know, because I was just always outspoken on Twitter. I was just talking my shit. And then I had thousands of people like weighing in on it. I'm like, oh, it's that the, the show. I didn't really <laughs> understand the crossover. So it took me a long time to longer than it should have to really realize you should separate. <laughs> Bill, because it was just a, I was just a dude talking to the air to separate that guy from the guy that they are interested in in the show. Um, so, you know, if I could go back and I can't change it, but I would have been so, well, I'm in, I'm pretty inactive on social media now, mm-hmm. but I would have been so inactive that I would appear to be a mystery, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, I just, I wasn't mature enough to separate that world. So I, you know, I kind of got a rude awakening and watch what you say and mm-hmm. so you, you can still be yourself without being on soapbox and all that, you know, so. Yeah, um, that was, you know, that was a huge realization for me was that it, even the Once Upon a Time fans reaching out to me, I, it would just mm-hmm. I couldn't compute that people w- were talking to me because of the show. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, oh, that was a gig I had months ago. And that was that was that. And then all of a sudden, you know, Gus Gus, <laughs> you know, coming from people like me. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was uh, I didn't really understand it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that answers your question, but the social media thing was like. Now it's insane. Yeah. But it wasn't, yeah. it was getting there at the time and it was really cool, but I wish I understood it better. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you think you're, 
it sounds like your understanding kind of came down to a, you know, tread carefully, use it when I need to sort of thing. Like, uh, did it turn yeah. you off of it? Yeah, it did. But it was a lot of it was my fault. I mean, it's like this. I'm a different guy than I was at that time. But that young man kind of felt like he had to be in, be in, you know. And I'm not that person. So a part of me wishes that this, this person was doing that stuff. But no, you know, I had some experiences where I said things and not, not particularly bad things, but I realized that I could burst a person's bubble and they mm -hmm. could then view that character different. Not even me, but they'll view that character through that that tweet that I, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that today. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, yeah, it, 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 that's a, you know, a balance because, you know, you're an actor, you want to be in the spotlight, you want people to know you, but if they feel like you, they know you too much, then it can get complicated. And yeah, I don't want to mess it up for people, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, I don't want it messed up for me. You know, how many actors have talked over the last six years that I cannot stand now? <laughs> These stupid people. So, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't want to be a stupid person. <laughs> You know, don't listen to us, man. Don't take political advice from us. Don't take anything from us because we don't know what we're talking about half the time. So take it with a grain of salt. Think about the character. Ignore the dude. <laughs> now, maybe maybe you should uh, you should re-embrace social media and just do acting tips with Jared Joseph or something. You know, stay yeah, on brand. Uh, you know, I'll figure something out, Bill. Um, you and mm -hmm. I met on Twitter. I don't have Twitter anymore. My Twitter account got attacked and hacked. Attacked. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about? Like it's a physical fight. <laughs> I got hacked. But I'm trying to find my, it, you know, I don't, I'm trying to re-embrace social media in the modern times here. I mean, the actors, the actor isn't the biggest deal in the world anymore. The TikTok star is, the YouTube star is, right? So. Mm -hmm. Dude, I have to use it in a lot of ways, but I got off for two years. I don't know if you noticed I was gone, but I was gone for two years. Oh, I noticed. Okay, good. I did good. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm learning to re-embrace it in a positive way. And I know positivity gets thrown around all the time, but in a productive mm -hmm. way, you know? Yeah, it's like versus Twitter where it was more of just like a megaphone, like the, the newer social so sites like uh, TikTok and stuff, like not only is it just like, sharing whatever but you also kind of have to be a content creator producer performer all right. wrapped into one which you know if you're a triple threat uh that's one thing but if you're someone who's just really likes going to the set and working in acting or whatnot that's a whole different skill set you have to develop that's 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 right bill and you know they used to really people uh, mentors in the acting world were always had disdain for this idea of a brand you're not a brand, you're a freaking actor, and you're a character, and you do the thing. You're not a brand. But now you can't really make a career without that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that coming. I didn't think anyone saw that coming. But you have to really embrace it, and you have to embrace it in a way that doesn't mess with you. Because, you know, I've seen people that I know personally get on, you know, with this, embrace this new thing, and they've really changed as people. And it, yeah. they're not the people that I know personally. And, there's a lot of there's a desperation that comes from it and then you start to get addicted to that attention right you know yeah and i i'm very aware of that and i don't want that to mess with me so but i do have you do have to have have you have to be your own manager in a lot of ways and your own mm -hmm. brand ambassador and all that shit so yeah you're right bill yeah it, it's hard too uh, especially for someone in the spotlight like you because you know a lot of people use social media to just represent who they really are the good the bad the ugly and everything but when you're yeah. you know out there not only representing you representing yourself as a performer but representing the shows you're on the productions you're involved with and stuff it's a whole different level of responsibility and you can't just say oh no i didn't like uh marvel movie number 17 because then right. everyone who likes marvel is going to come after you and might spoil that next job for you or something. No, you, you said it perfectly. And I, I wish that when I was younger, I kind of had the understanding that I was representing something else, you know? And I think you, you do have to take that seriously for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, a lot of responsibility. Good thing most people in Hollywood all have the same friggin' opinion, right? <laughs> Makes it easy, just copy and paste the other post. Copy and paste. <laughs> what, what is our, dear leader, what is our, our movement? 
Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Click, 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 click. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. All right, Jared. Uh, well, well, it's time for our next game. This game, it's one of my favorites. Uh, most people like it too. It's called Wheel of Anecdotes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a suggestion based on your hometown of Calgary. Uh, your challenge is to respond with a short anecdote from your hometown. The shorter, the better. Make sense? Yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, the first uh, word on the Wheel of Anecdotes is hobby. Hockey? Hobby. H-O-B-B-Y. Hockey. Am I hobby. doing this right when I say hockey? Oh, hockey is your hobby. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you played hockey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was my first love. Mm -hmm. First love. It was the one, you know, it was the one thing that I really leaned into that was healthy. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Calgary Tower. Hmm. Not tall. Not tall? Yeah, am I doing this right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can go ahead and expand a little bit if you'd like to. Okay, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it is it is the bait, it is the, the love child of the Seattle Space Needle and the, the CN Tower in Toronto. It's not <laughs> big. <laughs> it, looks great. it looks great in photographs, but uh, yeah, it's, it's our tower, man. Yeah, yeah. How, how tall, out of curiosity and for trivia for people listening, how, do you know how tall it is? Well, there was a time where the CN Tower was the largest freestanding building in the world. This is in Toronto, obviously. Mm -hmm. I would say Toronto, the, the CN Tower is maybe, or the Calgary Tower is maybe uh, not even a quarter of that. So I can't, <laughs> I can't paint the picture. It's not even close to the Sears Tower, nothing like that, you know. But it, it's, you know, looks great in photos, but it's not massive. The Calgary Tower, Tower, a.k.a. Skyscraper Junior. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> mini CN Tower. Nice. Okay, and uh, this one might hit or not. We'll see. Olympics. Yeah, 1988. Yeah. Um, that was... Uh, that was, you know, if anyone's ever seen the movie Cool Runnings, that was based mm -hmm. on the Calgary Olympics um the jamaican bobsled team but uh -huh. you know were, were you, yeah what do you want to know what what was that like 88 or something were you old enough to kind of have a have a sense of um i had heard i had heard that it was kind of crazy in calgary in that time during that time too it was man i think there's a lot of babies were made uh, a lot of people <laughs> born in 89 uh no i <laughs> I was I was I was a little too young to really comprehend it. The first Olympics that I was cognizant of watching was the 1994 Little Hammer Games, mm -hmm. and that's when I fell in love with every Olympics. And I didn't even know until about 1995 that we had the Olympics. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even know because I was three. Right? I was, I was three One of those things like, oh man, I missed it, but I I probably couldn't have understood it anyway. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I might have been there. I don't even know if my mom took me. I don't know. I got no memory of the 1988 Olympics. I do remember okay. the, the Calgary stop, the, the Calgary Flames Stanley Cup win in '89. No, I'll tell you that. I remember that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so uh, trains. A train. What was that? Sorry, you cut out a little bit. I don't know nothing about no trains. Okay, we'll skip it then. Okay, uh, now we're getting to the more the general ones here. So uh, horrified. Horrified. My mother's face when I came back from getting a bottle of the face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Give me, give me an example here. Uh, well, we, we, let's do you. We, let's do you. Texas horrified. Texas horrified. Um, Okay, uh, one time when I was uh, staying the night over at my uh, preacher's house because I was friends with his son, we went out into the woods behind his house and came across a snake and he picked it up and he threw it at me. And I was utterly horrified by that snake. Okay. okay. Yeah, I should have saved my bottle story for this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, well, just a couple more here. Uh, the yeah. Calgary Flames. Oh, my heart and soul. That's my heart and soul, man. 
Uh, yeah, my my true first love. What 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 was uh what was the first game you ever went to? You know my you know it wasn't really about going to the games for my 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 poor, my poor family, but you know the the thing was my grandfather and I, my mother's dad, we would watch Hockey Night in Canada every Saturday. The Flames weren't on every Saturday, but we 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 would watch a game every week. We would try every week, and watching hockey with him was you know that was like being at the game for me. It was him and I were I was synonymous with him. So very nice, very nice. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, snow, because I think of Canada, I think of snow. I've learned to love it, man. <laughs> I love it. You know, in Vancouver, like I said, it just rains. If you could think of Seattle's weather, it just rains, rains, rains. The Calgary has the snow, and I ran so far away from it when I was young. But I would, I would, I pray for it now. I pray for a Christmas with snow, mm -hmm. you know. Um, no, I love it, man. I love it. Yeah, like, I love the snow. I, I When I lived up north, I loved when it would snow. When I got my driver's license, I started hating the snow just because I, I hate having to, like, you know, do the ice skating yeah. thing out there. Well, Bill, let's be honest here. We like watching the snow. Maybe not so much being in it, but we like watching. It was beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's nice out the window, but it's not nice well, out the door. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But, you know, I embrace it. Right. Well, uh, Jared, I would like to congratulate you. You have won yet another game. Unfortunately, I don't have another ad to play for you, so I'm just going to applaud for you and say good job. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Uh, oh, that's for you. Me, that's on. for you. Very nice. That's for, that's, Very for the, nice. That's, for the, that's for the people, man. <laughs> All right. So uh, just a couple more questions to wrap up here. Um, let's see here. Uh, hold on one second. I have to cough. There we go. Okay, so I'm a big theater geek and a music geek, and I've done a fair amount of both kinds of performance. Uh, did, did you ever do any live performance in Calgary? And, uh, you know, what did you get into? What were your favorite venues? Stuff like that. Um, every, every year, we would go to the Christmas Carol live play. That was the Christmas tradition. Um, I did do school plays like i think most kids did and, and you know actually maybe i could try and get you a photo but i i was dressed as a cowboy and it Please was do. i think second grade yeah i forget what we were doing you know the, we teach line dancing in school in calgary hmm. right so no yeah so <laughs> it was a, it was a country themed play that i did i i think i maybe played the jesus <laughs> i don't I, and then something else <laughs> But there was these mandatory school plays, but I, I dreaded it. Uh, you know, as much as I told you, I was a bit of a dumb kid, but I was also very shy with uh, stage fright and stuff like that. So I didn't really lean into it. But going to see the plays with my mom every year for Christmas, that was always a tradition that I look forward to. Mm -hmm. I, so um, do you, uh, do you prefer uh, on-screen acting versus stage acting? Yeah, these are two different sports as far as I'm concerned, right? Which is, you know, people have asked me, why don't you get in when you do some theater? Because I don't want to disrespect people that have worked there so hard to learn how to do theater acting, mm -hmm. right? Just yeah. like it's an adjustment for them to come onto TV and bring it down, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not a skill set that I've built, developed, but, you know, yeah, I respect it for sure. Yeah, because, uh, you know, on screen acting, it's like, Obviously, you go in there with your lines learned and everything, but it's kind of it's kind of a plain and experimental to a point where you're doing all this stuff. And, you know, the rehearsal process on stage is like that. But once you get into the show, oh, it better be the show every night. You know, you better, yeah. you know, curtain better be at 830 and, you know, intermission at 915, stuff like that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Bill, I think that's why a lot of theater actors transition well if they do the work and learn how to, you know, bring it down, all that stuff. Because the work ethic that you, you, the pressure you put on yourselves on the stage to not be unprepared, yeah. you will bring that into the, the, the acting uh, and with the auditions and the film stuff. You'll bring it in. Where a lot of actors are lazy and they learn their lines on the right way to work and stuff like that. Theater actors are not lazy. <laughs> no, no, not at all.
I I mean, there's there's plenty of them that are, you know, violent drunks and, uh, you know, <laughs> but when they're on stage, they're completely responsible and they're they're you know, they're they're, they're they are there to work. They leave. You won't catch them with their pants work. down. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So I, this one, this question might hit, it might not, but I, I did see it and I thought you might have some perspective on it. So you can always tell a lot about a town by how it deals with tragedy. Um, so in 1999, there was a disaster at the Hub Oil Refinery in Calgary. Were you still in the city then? Uh, no, I was living in Ontario during that time. I came back in 2001. Okay. Okay. Uh well, when you, when you did come back, you know, that it, it was a pretty big event at the time. Did you sort of see any impact of it, uh, you know, or hear of any impact of it? No, sir. No, and I think that has probably more to do with where my lifestyle at that time, you know. I probably wouldn't have understood it. Um, mm -hmm. But if I can mention a tragedy, that would be okay. Yeah. The, the late, great Owen Hart, brother of Bret Hart, professional wrestler, Felt mm -hmm. his death in Kansas City in 1999 uh, while being lowered down to the ring. I'm sure a lot of people know the story, but we mourn Owen Hart to this day. You know, so if you're if you're a Calgary, a son of Calgary, you know we we you're forever a son of Calgary, and we take our hometown kids very seriously. So that's a tragedy that sticks a lot of people from Calgary is the Owen Hart death. Oh yeah, I, I I remember hearing about like I I was never that big into wrestling, but I remember hearing about that at the time. It must have been just like a uh, terrible local impact, you know, for sure. Cause yeah, I, we don't have a lot of stars, but when we yeah. have them, we we love them. <laughs> All right, so um, you know, you mentioned uh, you bounced around Canada a lot. Uh, what are some of your other favorite Canadian cities? Um. I mean, Toronto is kind of an easy one, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of the big, the big daddy. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I've had this crazy life, but I also have such fondness of like time periods. All of my life, my life is broken into these little chunks of time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did half of high school in Toronto or outside of Toronto, about 45 minutes outside. Um, Toronto sticks out. Like I said, living in Sault Ste. Marie, right by the Michigan border sticks out. Um, I spent time, in, you know, I, I lived with my, my mother and I actually lived in BC for a short period of time in a mm -hmm. woman's shelter. I lived in a woman's shelter with my mother. I was the only boy there. Oh, wow. And uh, I, I, that's when I got into skateboarding. It was 94, 93, 94. Uh, I was really into grunge music. And so when I think of, when I hear those songs, I was like that black kid with the skateboard and the grunge. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I can kind of piece it up like that, you know. And I think that's cool. It's almost like a photo book in my head of eras. Yeah. 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 Toronto um, and Calgary are my, my cities. You're two. You're two. Those are my two. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think you mentioned earlier that you have been back to Calgary on occasion. It, what kind of strikes you or shocks you the most when you go back? Like as far as what's changed? Oh, it's so big now, dude. <laughs> oh, there are there are highways and freeways that were not there when I was there. There's entire neighborhoods that didn't exist that now exist. And it's, it's pretty cool. And you know, all of my friends that I grew up with, they their dads, man, and they got three kids. They got these lives, and they don't live anywhere near the neighborhood that we grew up. And I think that's so cool that they bought these houses and these the suburbs and stuff like that. So yeah. it's a very different place. Um, Trucks everywhere. Vancouver is so green, green, green. You know, mm -hmm. you only see Teslas and Toyotas here. <laughs> you go back there, it's like every second vehicle is a pickup truck. I love seeing, you know, I love seeing that difference. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's it's largely looks the same, looks the same, feels different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. All right, Jared. Well, I think that about wraps it up for what I have to to ask you about today um sure if people if people want to you know check you out and follow you uh past this episode where can they check you out you know besides the random lifetime christmas movie <laughs> the hallmark christmas movie hallmark hallmark no okay, both. For, or the okay. cbc christmas movie <laughs>
No, when I'm not when I'm not doing a Christmas movie, I'm not on the internet. But uh, you can check me out. I have an Instagram account still. Uh, what's going on with me? You know, I, I started training MMA, so I'm doing that. Oh, uh, yeah, but you know, that, that, that if you want to reach me, reach me there. I'll get back to you. But I, you know, be, be forewarned. I don't do much. So, so uh, get a hold of you if we want to uh, learn about MMA. Otherwise, we'll probably see you at Christmas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't ask me about MMA. So basically, you can ask me about Christmas movies. And then by the time I answer you, you'll have seen the Christmas movie. That's basically how it's going these days. So <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Yeah. All right, uh, Jerry Bowl, I want to thank you so much again for joining us today. Uh, now, for you guys out there watching and listening to the show, if you like the show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get a podcast and leaving us an honest review to help get the word out about, about the show. You'll find all the links to everywhere you can find the show at billmeeks.com slash where I'm from, all one word. Uh, you can also watch us record the show live. Uh, it's not a very regular schedule, but it does happen at least four times a month over at youtube.com slash at billmeeksla. And if you uh, want to respond to what Jared said, or if you want to share some memories from where you're from, you can go ahead and shoot me an email, bill at billmeeks.com. Well, that does it for this week. Uh, join us next time when I talk to somebody else about where they're from. See you soon. And uh, for your live viewers, this is where I look over here and click stop streaming right now. Perfect. And we're done. <laughs> Excellent, man. It, 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 great talk. Great talk. Great talking to you. Sorry. Like that game, it, the, the one game is always everyone is like into it immediately or they're like, I'm not sure what to do with this. This is too much freedom, which is part of the reason I like it. Well, yeah, you know, I've done a couple where it's like I it just went off track. I, just, I watched it back later. I was like, that wasn't what he asked me. That's not the game. <laughs> So, you know, you want to tread lightly and do the damn thing right, man. That's all. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 the nice thing with that one, too, like I always put way more than I need uh, just to make sure that um, – sorry, I'm just hitting end here. Uh, but uh, I always do 